In Exodus chapters 25 to 31, we have the instructions for the construction of the tabernacle. There are, as we have seen already, comparisons to be drawn between Eden and the tabernacle, and between creation and what takes place in the establishment of the tabernacle. The tabernacle's construction is also ordered according to a creation-like pattern in these chapters. In Genesis chapter 1 to chapter 2 verse 4, we see that the creation has two distinct stages. On the first three days, the order of the creation is formed by the division between darkness and light, waters above and waters below, the land and then the sea. On the second three days, each of these realms is filled and distributed to ordained rulers. Day four corresponds to day one, day five to day two, and day six to day three. And in Exodus chapters 25 to 31, we see two sets of phrases dividing the construction of the tabernacle, pattern phrases and ordinance or generation phrases. The pattern phrases which occur in the first half, in chapter 25 verse 9 and 40, in chapter 26 verse 30, and in chapter 27 verse 8, all refer to the forming stage of the new creation. The ordinance or generation phrases in chapter 27 verse 21, chapter 28 verse 43, chapter 29 verse 9, and chapter 30 verse 10 all refer to the filling stage, where the newly formed order is filled and apportioned to rulers. If we divide these out according to the days of creation, we notice some further parallels to be drawn. The first day, in chapter 25, begins with the formless raw materials that are assembled for the construction of the tabernacle. The ark, the table, the lampstand are all formed on the first day. They are covered with gold. They represent the radiance of God's glory presence. The ark represents God's heavenly throne. The table is the earth beneath, and the lampstand is the light of the first day. The second day, in chapter 26, is the day when the tabernacle is created, the firmament between heaven and earth. The blue and purple veil with woven cherubim represents the firmament dividing the heavens above from all beneath. The third day, in chapter 27, involves the establishment of the brazen altar and the tabernacle court. The altar, which would have turned green over time, is akin to the grass on the third day of creation. It represents Israel and also the mountain of the Lord. The establishment of the court dividing it from the land beyond is like the formation of the land from out of the sea, and it sets up the boundaries for the sea so that it should not pass. The fourth day, at the end of chapter 27, involves the oil for the lampstand, which corresponds to the great lights created on the fourth day of the original creation. If we follow this closely, we'll notice that we've started off with gold items, then with a collection of silver, then with bronze items, and then oil and incense. These materials correspond with the gathering of materials at the beginning of the chapter. In chapters 30 to 31, we go through the cycle of creation again. And in this case, we have a gold item that's made first that corresponds with the other gold items of day one. The incense altar establishes a continual ascent to God before the veil in front of his throne. It represents prayer with the pillar of cloud and fire perhaps as well. It's gold and square, it's a fifth of the length and the width of the bronze altar out in the courtyard, representing some sort of correspondence with that. Following the altar of incense, the second day corresponds to the poll tax, the gathering of silver from the people. This numbering of the people is also used to construct the tabernacle, and so it corresponds with the second day. It's used for the material of the tabernacle, it's used to pay for the construction of the tabernacle, and it's also something that covers the people. The third day corresponds with the labor. So we've had the bronze altar, and now we have a bronze laver. Land and sea. There's natural symbolism here. The laver is made of bronze, it belongs to a realm of lesser glory, and it's connected with the themes of procreation and life. It's not used for worship, it prepares for it. It is part of the lakes of the land, as it were, the waters of the land that the Lord has provided, along with the earth. So you have earth and sea represented in the altar and the labor in the courtyard. 
Finally, corresponding to day four in the second cycle is the anointing oil. It's a special recipe, holy to the Lord and not for common use. So in the earlier cycle, we saw that it corresponded with oil for the lampstand. And now this teaches us that the lampstand corresponds with the humans that are serving within the tabernacle. The lampstand needs oil and the human beings need oil. Just as we see in Genesis chapter 2, where the man is created to be a sort of light of the earth and then placed in the firmament of the garden in what follows.